Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby. We're going to talk today about my CRC filters. Uh, first, this video is sponsored by GLC PCB. Uh, it's a company that will help you design your own boards. Actually, it's a CRC filter board that I have designed. I've designed them with GLC PCB. I've even had a couple of videos where I described in detail exactly how you can actually design uh, boards yourself. So uh, one of them talks in detail about how to order a, a board or if you have a Gerber file. And the other one explain to you in detail how you can actually design your own board using uh, easy software called actually easy EDA and once you've designed your board they can you can then submit it to GLC PCB very easily uh, so we're gonna talk today about uh, three uh, CRC uh, filters I will start with first first we're gonna start with my original CRC filter which is now on its version 4 this filter was designed mainly for my Gapster TD1 DAC it actually fits beside the PCM board to filter uh, power supplies that are 15 volt and that's basically how it all started and after that there was a, a need for another one which is called now the dual crc pro and this one is for plus and minus 5 volt and uh, lastly we have the also the very popular crc pro and uh, which is also very widely used and now not only people are using it for my gaps or td1 dac they're using it for pretty much to power anything uh, within the voltage rating of these boards. I tested those boards uh, and uh, actually you can see in this video where I actually put uh, 10 different uh, power supplies and I tested them all with and without the CRC uh, power filter and you could see the difference to yourself. These were done under load. We use, I used a little light bulb that simulates like around a couple hundred milli, milliamps of draw but you can easily use them up to three to five amps max and it's not good at all we have a big spike here of uh, close to six uh, millivolts actually might even be more there's a quite a few little spikes as well here nothing bad but you know there's there's a quite a few of them uh, putting a crc filter on it let's try that i mean it's gonna make it better but not you know this is not a miracle device it's not going to be let's see what happens so i put a crc filter wow actually it kind of cleaned up nicely but that's a good testament for the uh, little uh, crc filter that i've designed if you guys haven't seen that video i'll put a link in the corner up top and the description below as well and uh so They've been very popular and I've, I've had quite a good uh, success with them. So how do they work? Uh, basically, you've got your, your power supply often have a little bit of noise. Sometimes it's a long cord. Sometimes it's just the nature of it. And some of them are plain, plain horrible. You could see them. If you watch one of my videos, you could see how horrible some of those switching power supplies can be. It's like <laughs> quite the... Uh, uh, quite a spectacle of display actually it's kind of cool in some ways but uh, cool in a bad way not in a good way so you could see how this horrible power supply performs and uh, I'm not gonna tell you this is you see those power supplies I mean, every time you buy a little small cheap gear audio gear you get those power supply most of them sadly that's how they perform you're you're getting used to the power supplies i recommend here and there like in canada's linear power supply or something like the studio 900 but once you start going back to some of the horrible power supply you know, oh my god now i see such what a big difference these things make uh, I'm interested to see what would my CRC filter would do with such a horrible uh, power supply. Actually, let's, let's give it a test just to just to humor ourselves here. Uh, don't expect miracles, but um, I'll see if it makes it any better. This is actually fun. I'm doing this on the fly. I have not like tried this. I'm doing it exactly. I'm learning as you guys are. So this is the same uh, horrible power supply. So we're gonna put it in my Gapster filter here. So we're gonna plug it back into the audio analyzer by uh, Quant Asylum. And uh, right off the bat, let's have a look at the screen. It's actually changed dramatically. 
from where it was before to this. What an improvement. Like this is like a night and day change uh, just by putting uh, my Gapster filter. Again, like I said, don't expect miracles. There's still quite a bit of noise here at the very beginning, but uh, definitely improved quite a bit. Uh, from what it was before. Still, this is not a power supply I would use in this state because still I would consider it noisy, uh, especially in the lower frequency range. But the amount of drastic changes that it did for it, it's actually quite remarkable with just a small, simple device. Now, not all of them are bad. Some switching to power supplies are actually good. And surprisingly, some linear power supplies are quite bad. So you never know. You need to know exactly uh, what are their rating. And sometimes uh, the company rates them not very, uh, not honestly. Sometimes you have to do your own homework or have someone that's tested them that can tell you what they are rated. I, if you want to look at the video where I tested 10 of them, you'll see at least what I've rated some of these power supplies. And some of them are very, very inexpensive from Adi Express. And even the Linear Pi, like you don't need the Pro version. I think on the end Canada it's fairly like it's under uh, $80. So, so you can get some really uh, good results without really breaking uh, the bank. So how do the CRC filter work? Basically, the old days, a CRC filter was like you get your, your power supply, you put basically a little big capacitor, then you put a small tiny resistor, and then a couple of capacitors, and that reduces the, the noise. And that was quite successful, but not overly successful. Like it wasn't like a huge difference. But it was, it's still used today, even with uh, tube amplifiers, it's used all the time, where they use uh, a resistor and then uh, some capacitors right after. That's very commonly used to this day. But what's so special about uh, these uh, my Gapster CRC uh, filters it's like is they use a whole boatload of small capacitor but there are extremely extremely low ESR and high quality capacitors uh, each capacitor of these uh, is like 10 milliohms so when you for example put 40 of them you're gonna have a huge you're down to the micro ohm level of ESR these are figures that were unheard of before but thanks to some new technology you can do it now those capacitors are very hard to, to source uh, a lot of times I have to order them far in advance because uh, there's a there's not a lot of supply out there it's kind of it's not like they're new but they're newish and there's like there's still like it's hard especially when you're designing like some of my boards use 50 capacitors like the the dual pro I have about 70 capacitors in this thing so so when you start making, say you want to do like, you know, 30 boards, just imagine you're talking thousands of little capacitors and the price adds up very quickly. These are not your cheapest cheap capacitor that you buy for five cents each. They're not cheap. They're not expensive, but still when you add like 70 of them, you know, price goes, you know, becomes significant. Uh, but, uh, but we're not here, you know, we're trying to get the best of the best and that's what these were designed for, to get that part of the really good uh, filtration. Uh, my newer one, Oksho, not only their CRC filter, actually CRLC filter, so it's actually um, a ferrite bead in the in the past where actually it reduces high frequency noise the way ferrite beads work is if you have a low frequency say under you know you know 1k or something like that it, it pass right through but once you have some very high frequencies the resistance grow bigger and bigger up to 300 ohms which can reduce effectively uh, some of those horrible power supplies if you're using some of them not completely again these are not miracle devices but uh, as you can see if you watch my video where I tested them uh, they made a huge difference. I've even tested them with my latest uh, Quantum Asylum. Actually, if you haven't seen my video, I did some tests uh, with the Quantum Asylum as well. And there are very similar results to the tests I did. If you are interested in designing your own uh, CRC filter, 
you can see uh, I can uh, you can log into my Patreon for as little as one dollar. You can actually access even the Gerber files for this is for my original CR filter. It's not as fancy as these ones, but it gives you an idea how you can design it yourself. All you have to do is add a bunch of capacitors, maybe make the board a little bigger or smaller, make it your own basically, and uh, and then you can do it. Uh, my uh, videos talk about step by step how you can actually uh, either order with GLC PCB or design with GLC PCB and, uh, and get exactly what, what you want. When you order with GLC PCB, it comes with a, either a small box or a big box or sometimes bigger box. Very nicely packed usually. As you can see like this is one of my latest order and uh, they put lots of foam in between them and they're separately nicely, nicely basically shipped. This is the latest uh, CRC uh, for uh, to be used with a 15 volt uh, beside my Gapster TD1 DAC. It's gotten a little bit bigger over time and uh, now it even has the ferrite beads and the little uh, basically a uh, little fuse actually that you can bypass as well. All these boards are designed to be very configurable so it depends on what you're using you can bypass the fuse, you can bypass the, the ferrite beads, you can bypass the resistor so they can be used in a multiple uh, way. When you usually order them I send you usually a little video and a little configuration file that you can helps you can configure them the way you want it for depends on your project. If you are ordering from GLC PCB, if you're ordering just a simple like board with no components uh, whatsoever on it and it's under 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter, it's extremely cheap. It's like five bucks or so and shipping is also uh, very inexpensive. So you can get an order for like under $10. Uh, as soon as you add components, so or as soon as the uh, the price of the, your project uh, gets bigger than higher than twenty dollars, it automatically becomes uh, it, it automatically gets shipped with one of the big uh, courier companies and becomes very much more expensive to ship. So just be careful on when you're ordering things. So yes, it is inexpensive, but uh, when you start ordering something uh, that requires a lot of components and becomes a little bit like I said pricey then tr it triggers a, a quite a bit of shipping and you know it's normal because they they become heavy you'll be uh, amazed that uh, once you add like a few components and those boards have copper in them before you know it they get like you know like three four five pounds and that requires you know a good uh, like a, over a hundred dollars in shipping sometimes so just be be mindful on that don't always assume that oh you can everything is dirt cheap. It is inexpensive, yes, and it's a uh, good value for your money, but again, it depends on uh, what you're ordering. Basically, you can uh, a little uh, discount code. So when you first log in, you get like a, quite a bit of different coupons that you can basically apply to different projects. And that helps a, a little bit at the beginning, making it a little bit inexpensive for the first time. Now, bear in mind, you cannot use all the coupons to so when they say, oh, we're going to give you $60 worth of coupons, it's not like you can use them all on one project. But, you know, you can apply $9 here, $6 there on different uh, aspects of things. And, you know, it helps a little bit. If you are using my CRC filter or any project to, for, for that matter, it's always important to follow all the safety guidelines. All these projects should be in a metal case. Uh, they all should be fused. At some point, you don't always have to put the fuse at the very end of your power supply. Like, uh, like in case you're using a CRC filter, you can put the, it could be the fuse after, for example, the transformer line, or it could be in between my CRC filter and your other power supply. But there is a fuse somewhere just for, uh, you know, something short somewhere that you don't end up having small little uh, wires uh, burst on fires. All your wires should be basically fireproof all your wires should be sick enough for two reasons to reduce basically the ESR because we're struggling to make it low ESR so don't go using skinny little wires you got to use sick wires 
and basically they need to be fireproof and everything should be in a metal container so use them at your basically your own basically discretion and basically make sure you're following all the codes uh, definitely they should be in a metal enclosure with some fuse somewhere in the line if you're thinking of ordering through gel CPCB, there will be in the description below tons of different links, some basically promo links to get some discounts. There will be uh, links on how you can actually uh, access uh, some of my videos where I talk about how you can design your own uh, boards and how you can order through GLCPCB. This makes it easier for you to understand how you can do it. There will be a link on how you can actually support me and join my Patreon. Not only just to support me, you're going to get a lot of different information that is not available on my regular uh, YouTube channel. And uh, there will be other links that are useful, like how I tested to then 10 different power supplies and stuff like that. Uh, matter of fact, in this corner here, I'm going to put uh, that link about how you can actually have uh, tested different uh, power supplies. And I'll put a link in here, in my early video on how you can actually uh, design with JLC PCB. Uh, there'll be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to support me and actually subscribe to this channel, and uh, which way will help me in some ways. My Patreon link is in the description below and I hope to see you in another video. Take care.